And we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be doing the Little Ladies Day seasonal event for 2020. And as always, hello from Ifri. So we are here in Uldar, Depths of Nold. We are at 10-8. We need to talk to the Royal Senechal. Let's talk to him. So the quest is called Pretty and Peaches. The Royal Senechal is eager to recruit others to join in the festivities. This quest is available for a limited time only. So, oh, as I live and breathe, is that Madame Mifri? How long has it been? Truth be told, I had hoped against hope I might see you on this most resplendent of days. For there is only one woman who could make this little lady's day even more wonderful than the last. The maidens of Eorzea cry out for um, a senachal of your calibre to dote upon them. I'm, I'm doing my part by overseeing this event and I'm seeking the aid as many magnanimous souls as possible. So that every maiden in this fair city feels as exalted as the Sultana herself. Of course, if the satisfaction of good deeds done isn't enticing enough, there are fabulous rewards to be had for any who assist me. Uh, what say you? Will you don the mantle of Senechal? I knew from the moment I saw you that you would be eager to serve. You have my thanks for what I'm sure will be a job well done. As for the job itself, it is most elegant in its simplicity. Go forth into the city streets, dressed to impress and with the spirit of the day in your heart. If you should see a young lady in any matter of distress or discontent, approach them as a gentleman would, lending an ear to their plight and a hand to their aid. And I think I know of just such a troubled soul. So greetings, adventurer, or should I say Senechal. I am of House Fawn, here to assist with the day's revelry. Lady Fawn, what fortuitous timing. I was just about to send this uh, noble Senechal out on her mission, but it appears you have saved us the trouble of finding a maiden in need. Indeed, while strolling through Emerald Avenue, I spied a young girl whose crestfallen expression served as a stark contrast to the merriment around her. I fought to call out to her, but she disappeared in the crowds before I had the chance. We must speak her, seek her out, sorry, and I believe three sets of eyes would serve better than one. I let us search for the troubled soul together. What did she look like? Um, I'll take the question as a uh, Tessai agreement. I knew you'd be eager to assist me. All right, then. Be on the lookout for a Lalafell with flaxen hair. With haste and some luck, we should find her before long. Very well. Let us take to Emerald Avenue and bring cheer to this young woman's heart. Hey. When you have sort of character names which look like they're going to be really complicated to like pronounce. I don't even bother. After six years of this game, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like names are generated in a random letter generator. Okay, cheery citizen. So a lot of fell was uh, flaxen hair. Matter of fact, I did see a girl fitting that description just moments ago. I remember the look on her face more than anything. Although everyone around her was beaming, she was frowning like someone had just snatched her last lemon cake away. If you mean to follow her, she's headed off towards the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. Cool. Okay, let's go. So, Sapphire Avenue Exchange is just there, but we'll teleport just for the sake of it.
Okay, where is she? Where is she? It's kind of sad for me as an old player of this game to see these areas so empty. But whatever. Golden hair, you say? A lot of hell, you say? I did see a small figure with vibrant hair across my path, but it could have just uh, been a small child. She was heading towards the gold court, of course. Only the twelve know where she went from there. Right, so where's the gold court? Go this way. Man. I can't believe I've been running around these areas for the last more than six years. Incredible. Need to get a hobby, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, now that you mention it, I think I saw a girl like that not too long ago. She was ascending the steps of the Husting Strip. Although judging by her plodding steps, she was dreading whatever awaited her at the top. By her rage, I reckon she is a patient at uh, Frondale's uh, Frondale. Chances are you could catch her if you left now. Okay. So if we teleport straight to the Alchemist Guild, we we'll do ourselves a favor. It makes you wonder how I have a degree. I just pronounce words, I was like, Bleh. Okay, here we go. So, have you been following me? Why? I don't want any trouble. Trouble? Why, my dear girl? We're here to give you just the opposite. But first, perhaps an introduction and an explanation would allay your fears. I am um, Aldelef born, and we're here because it is our duty to see that no young girl walks the streets of this city with her head down. Could you imagine? Like, she was just born, her mum was walking her back and forth. Rock a bye and <laughs> and so on. Okay, you you can finish the rest of the joke in your own heads. So that's why you were looking at me. I suppose I should thank you. I am uh, Mamoru, by the way. The pleasure is entirely mine, Miss Mamoru. And what exactly is troubling you? Tell us and we shall do all in our power to set things right. Really? Well, you know, uh, Fordale's <laughs> right. Um, I'm staying in the children's ward. You see, they don't let us go outside very often and things were dreadfully boring. That is until I met Laurie and we became the best of friends. We promised each other that we would both get out better before Little Lady's Day, so that we could play under the peach blossoms together. But, Laurie suddenly got worse. The physicians only gave me permission to leave, and Laurie had to stay behind. I didn't want to go without her, but I didn't want to miss this chance either. So here I am. It was no fun, all by myself. How tragic. My heart breaks for her. <laughs> Like, let me say that more robotic. How tragic my heart breaks to hear her tale. There must be something we can do for them. Meteor! No, maybe not. Uh, you don't need to go out to go out. Sadly, Laurie's health comes first. Uh, you have the right of it, of course. The physicians surely have good reason to keep little Laurie under their care. 
ill, we may not be entirely without recourse. Ah, I know. We bring the festival to them. That way they can enjoy the splendor of Little Ladies Day without stepping foot outside the... <laughs> we can start by decorating the children's ward with the selfsame trappings which adorn the city. And there is yet more we can do. Perhaps a special guest could be arranged for the children. When we're done, I dare say uh, Frondale <laughs> may come to rival Emerald Avenue in its pageantry. Really, truly, I can't wait to see the look on Laurie's face when she sees. I just hope Master uh, Damelot says it's okay. Would you come with me to the children's ward, pretty please? I'm sure he would listen to you. I'll tell the alchemist at the entrance to expect you. Okay, so let's go. So, Momoru could barely contain herself when she told me about you. She's waiting inside the children's ward. Do you wish to enter? Yes. Okay. And now, here's a face I did not expect to see today. What brings you to Thorndale? <laughs> I hope you have not fallen ill. Uh, Master Demeliot. Let me explain. I see. You mean to host a little ladies day of sorts. I must say, it sounds like it would bring some sorely needed colour to these otherwise drab halls. Very well, you have my full support. It would be remiss of me to deny those under my care uh, the most effective medicine of all, joy. If I may, let's keep this a secret from the others for now, shall we? Children do so love surprises. Indeed, to that end, I suggest we decorate while the others are absent. There is just one obstacle, however. The sick are not known for their habit of coming and going. But Master Dumbledore, have you forgotten? The children are soon to undergo their regular examinations and will be away for the better part of the day. Would that not be the ideal time to decorate? Yes, you are right. Quite right. Excellent thinking. And no one would bat an eye if I were to conduct the examination slightly earlier than scheduled. Mifri, could you summon the children to the examination room in my stead? Well, it seems that we have the solution to our most pressing concern. I'll begin procuring the necessary trimmings. I also think it would be prudent to provide gifts for the children. No extravagance must be spared on this special occasion. My dear Sanichal, can you can I depend on you to take care of this task? I know what I can do. Laurie is always talking about Redolent Rose of the Weaver's Guild. I think if we both give him our most winning smiles, he might be convinced to come for a visit. I say we because Miss Mifri is coming too, right? Totally. Uh, now that we all have our duties, let us attend to them. Time is of the essence. Oh, so let's hang on a minute. Okay, let's talk to them first. Oh, hello there. Are you someone's ma? Oh, the examinations already? I nearly forgot. Thanks for reminding me. I would have caught an earful if I was late again. Huh? He's a dog bowl. <laughs> oh, I hope Mamoru is having fun out there. Oh, who are you? Oh, another examination already. That bit of medicine they gave me last time didn't help at all. Are they gonna make me drink it again? 
I wouldn't mind it if they at least let me go outside. Everyone's probably having so much fun out there. I hope Momoru is too. I try to think of her when I'm forcing that poison down my gullet. Oh, next. I haven't seen you before. Are you a new physician? What? Another examination? They already know I'm sick. Why do they gotta keep poking and prodding me? Ugh, well, I suppose I better go. Speak to Mamoru. Uh, did you speak with everyone? Lori didn't look too sad, did she? I suppose it's only natural for her to feel that way. But with little effort, we'll turn her frown into a smile soon enough. Now, let's be off to the Weaver's Guild to speak with Red Redolent Rose. Ori always keeps me up late, gushing about his designs. She just adores weaving, as she's had plenty of time in the <laughs> to practice. She even made me a lace scarf, and says when she grows up, she'll join the Guild. Personal visit with Redolent Rose himself would set her as right as any medicine could. Let's be off. Okay, so let's now go to the Weaver's Guild. I have spent a lot of time there in my past. As you guys know who have been watching my videos for a long time. Okay, Weaver's Guild. Let's go. Right, let's go to see Mr. Redolent Rose. Okay, what's up? Oh, what do we have here? A little bird flown into my guild, but is too shy to sing. What pray tell could inspire her to grace us with her voice? Well, you see, I... Uh, the others are counting on you. Do it for Lori. Uh, yes, of course, thank you. Uh, Master Rose, I have something to ask of you. You see, my dear friend Lori is very sick, and she has always had a passion for weaving. If you could visit her at uh, Frondale... <laughs> Say no more, a fledgling weaver is in need, and I shall gladly fly to her assistance. The tapestry of this guild's history ever requires new hands, to sew it after all. Forgive me, but I have um, some matters I must attend to before leaving. Rest assured, however, that I'll make haste to the children's ward the very moment I am done. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we did it. Truth be told, in all the stories Lori told me of Master Rose, I imagined him to be a little... littler? Lori never told me how kind he was, though. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to resist telling Laurie that Redolent Rose is visiting the Hulu. Promise to stop me if I begin to blurt it out. I hope everyone else is coming along as well as we are. I mean, I don't really mind if they show it one time or a thousand times. I'm just going to say Hulu every single time. My brain simply said no. You're not going to try and pronounce this word. It hurts. It hurts so much. Okay, let's go to the Alchemist Guild. Where is it? Okay, there it is. So we've managed to finish decorating, and I must say, I am quite pleased with our efforts. Would you like to enter? Yep. Let's go. Wow, look at this. So many flowers. It's so pretty. I 
I dare say I could not have arranged a more pleasant display myself. Oh, you're Redolent Rose, eh, sir? Indeed I am, and you must be Laurie, whom I've heard so much about. You know my name? Why, of course I do. I must say I envy you. Uh, have such a devoted friend like little Mamoru here. You also told of your passion for weaving. Is it true that you wish to join the guild someday? If so, pray allow me to answer any questions you may have. I would not dream of keeping the tricks of our trade from an aspiring guild member. What's weave? Like watch Mifri's YouTube videos, you'll find out. Yay! I know what to do. Now then, if all the little ladies would gather around, I have presents for all of you. Uh, place these peach blossoms in your hair and become a pr um, as princesses. That's cute. So surely you all know the history of this day, when Sultan Baldric would serve as then a child to a specifically chosen girl. These um, Akrorudududu have roots in that tradition. One little lady's day long ago, a young lady beset by illness was chosen as Baldric's princess. Upon learning of her condition, he presented her with a wreath of peach blossoms to wear upon her head, much like the ones you now hold in your hands. Peach blossoms have long been said to ward off ailments of all manner, and some even believe that they hold the key to eternal youth. It was with this in mind that the Sultan gave his gift. Soon after that, the young woman made a complete recovery and went on to live in a, a long and fruitful life. Perhaps the legends of the blossom properties were true after all. Little ladies, little princesses, uh, keep these always close, and if your sickness should ever seem too much to bear, remember the princess who came before you. As she did, you too shall regain your strength. We will, we will, thank you. Ah, but I didn't forget, Master... Blah. I have something for you as well. Here, wear this. Like this? Does it suit me? Better than I dared imagine. I suppose I should be grateful for that. However, I must admit, I failed to see how this trinket will help. Um, but I haven't finished the story. The tale doesn't end with the peach blossoms. Oh no. The Sultan also sent a hand-picked physician his very best to care after his princess. That physician wore a monocle much like this one. I had a feeling th that, besides lending an air of authenticity to the day, a monocle would become you. And so, with the help of the Senechal, I endeavoured to procure one. Your efforts are much appreciated, my lady. I shall do my utmost to honour the example set by this physician, and will not rest until every one of my princesses returns to prime health. I trust you will only impress Master Dumbledore. Would you look at them? Uh, those smiles embody everything beautiful about this day. Uh, Master Dumbledore, my dear Senate child, I couldn't have achieved this alone. I'm in your debt. And let us not forget Mifri. You truly are a sen Senate child among Senate child. <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Indeed, any would be hard pressed to find a more gentlemanly company than the one gathered here to another successful little lady's day.
Okay. So let's go. So seeing Paul Momoa in distress reminded me of um, that little lady's day long ago and of my own struggles with my physical condition. It was clear then what needed to be done. Considering everything had to be arranged at such short notice, I'd say we pulled together uh, splendidly. There was nary a frown to be seen on both child and adult alike. And now, although it pains me to say it, I must return to my manor. My family tends to fret unreasonably if I'm absent over long. However, before I go, I do believe there is a matter of your gift. Master blah, 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 is keeping it safe for you at my behest. May we meet again soon, adventurer. Okay, thanks. Laurie and the others will be taking... Sorry, talking about this for moves to come. We'll keep these in our hair until every one of us is better. We'll never forget what you all did for us today. I'm sure of it. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. <coughs> Sorry. So, Master Lulula, I guess I've been doing a little bit too much, um, said you're welcome at the children's ward any time during Little Lady's Day. Do come visit. Okay. So, I do not believe I have had the opportunity to thank you personally. Your efforts serve not only to lift the children's spirits, but the staffs as well. Had uh, Lady Hullard not already arranged to reward your cooperation, I certainly would have. That being said, these are yours. It is not often the children have the chance to meet an adventurer, let alone one so kind as yourself. Maybe visit us again when you, while you can. Okay, so we're going to get a princess piece corsage and a monocle as well. Nice. So we got the achievement just peachy. Let's see what the um, corsage looks like. Whip. Am I showing my headpiece? It should be. Wow, it, lo it, it does look really cute. I've got to say. Looks very nice. So, but let's see what else is available. A guest to impress. Okay, so we can get some confetti if we just do quests for him over and over again. So, in traditional Mifri style, uh, we're going to end the video. Thank you for watching. And we're going to just, you know what? We're going to stand on the desk. There's no rules here in this channel. So anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri. Bye, guys.